Welcome everybody, this is Cynthia Abulafia. I'm doing a review of some of the challenging postures for yoga. And in this video, I'm going to look at headstand. We don't often think of headstand as the hardest of the inversions, but for teaching purposes, I absolutely believe that it is. Harder than your Pincha Mayarasana forearm balance, harder than your handstand. And the reason for this is because in those poses, while yes, it requires so much strength of the arms, the shoulders, the core, the back, um, this one requires a particular amount of strength for the neck. And there's actually a lot more range for injury in the headstand than in any of the other inversions. And so when we teach this one, we have to be very conscious, very careful, very specific, and we really have to spend some time in our class leading up to the actions that are going to help strengthen us for headstand practice, Shirshasana. There are actually two variations of headstand. Well, there's, there's more than two, but there are two that we will go over in this video, Shirshasana A and B. And I will specifically be looking at Shirshasana A as Shirshasana B does put even more pressure on the head. A has the hands behind the head and the elbows wrapping forward. So you have the base of the forearm supporting you as well as the top of the head. B has the hands and the head in a three-pointed, either equilateral or isosceles triangle. So the head can be a little bit further back, but the hands are parallel to one another. So that is a three-pointed headstand, hand, hand, head. Okay. So for headstand practice, in today's video, you'll need three or four blocks. If you have thin blocks like I do, it'll definitely be four. And if you're very tall, it'll definitely be four. If you don't have that many blocks at home, I totally understand. You can just watch what I'll show you and practice it at some point when you do have access to that many blocks. Okay, so assuming you've done all of the work that it requires to strengthen the spine, the core, the pelvis, the shoulders through a strong flow class, and especially a strong flow class that opens up the neck that strengthens the spine, then you can be ready to teach your headstand practice. So my favorite variation of headstand practice will actually include these blocks. This is called headless headstand. Now for those of you that are concerned about the pressure on your cervical spine, I'm with you. That's why I love this variation. There's actually no weight of your head on the ground at all. So it's something kind of like a Pincha Mayarasana and something kind of like a headstand, which is why we call it a headless headstand. That doesn't mean that you don't have a head. It just means there's no pressure there. So you take one block and you bring it a few inches away from the wall, the tall way. And you turn that block sideways because you're creating a T. And in that T, you're stacking the rest of your blocks two minimum, perhaps three. When you stack those blocks into a T, you want to make sure that your base has enough room behind it. And you want to make sure that the stacked blocks are actually touching the wall. So here you have your T formation. This is such a wonderful pose. I'm going to show it to you in two different angles. Okay. So you actually take your fingertips and you wrap your fingertips behind the base of the T, that lowest vertical block. You set yourself up in a dolphin pose. And hopefully you've already done a few dolphin poses in your class. So you can come right into it. You tuck your chin in, but you don't put your head on the ground. Instead, you walk yourself forward and you keep walking yourself forward until your back actually presses into the blocks. So there's a lot of pressure between the shoulder blades here, pressing into those blocks. As you'll see in the rest of our headstand practice, you don't ever really kick into a headstand. <laughs> and by that, I really wanna be firm. 
you really never kick into a headstand. But there is no weight on the head in this particular variation. The head is hovering half an inch off the ground. The forearms, however, are pressing. So we're going to hold to our rule of never kicking into a headstand, but we will pull a knee into the chest and maybe then find the wall, maybe straighten the leg and do a little bounce up. So more kick than in any other headstand. Press into the forearms and wrap your triceps in and then really push your back into the blocks. It doesn't seem like this would be a restorative pose, believe it or not, it kind of is because you have the support of the blocks behind your heart. When you come down, you land your feet down, you take a child's pose because you've been upside down, you wait for your blood to kind of rebalance in your body and then you bring yourself up and you can do this a few times. And I have people that are afraid of going upside down in inversions, but when they give this one a try and they really find it and they find that release of the shoulder blades, the rhomboids, the mid traps on that block, it's actually a delightful pose. I'm going to give you another angle here. So you create a little T. You can see from this angle, really this band of blocks here that's going to come between the shoulder blades. For your tall friends, you might want that band even taller so that really they have the whole rib cage supported. And again, more kick than you would allow ever in an inversion practice of headstand. So you bring yourself in, you take a leg up. Oh, there it is. And then you press into the blocks. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, the pelvis kind of wants to drop. You want to go into a little back bend, but don't let it. Put a little bit of engaging of your tailbone up toward the sky, feeling that lift of pressure out of the pelvis as you keep pushing into those blocks. So can you see my head is free? It might be touching the ground lightly through the hair, but there's no weight there. It's really nice. And again, I'll come down and I'll let it go into a child's pose and I'll bring myself up. So, headless headstand, my favorite variation. Those of you that are going into a headstand practice, I'm not gonna use a blanket for sheer Shasana A on the forearms, it's just too unstable of a base. But you can use it for sheer Shasana B with your hands on the sticky mat and your head on the blanket. So, for sheer Shasana A, you've already practiced headless headstand you already have some strength through your cervical spine. Something I'll say about this pose is you don't want to get so excited about doing this pose that the first time you come into it, you're there for five minutes, right? You want to come into this pose and maybe take two breaths and then rest. The next time you practice it, maybe you do it for four breaths. And I'm not talking about come down, come back up, come down, come back up. I'm talking about a different day, right? So you want to give yourself as much patience for strengthening your neck as you give yourself patience for strengthening any other part of your body, right? So in your yoga practice, it takes a long time to build up a chaturanga. You don't just come right into it. It's the same thing with headstand. Don't assume that because you're strong everywhere else, you're strong in your neck. It's a whole different set of pressure that you are strengthening. So. When you come into it, your hands can be in a soft opening, kind of like you're holding a golf ball or a delicate flower between your palms, so you're not crushing it. There's a soft opening. Now, when you bring your hands behind your head, that soft opening should allow your head to sit right over your heart with a natural curve at your cervical spine. I've noticed that if you actually clasp your hands all the way around your head and have your palms flush against your skull, it flattens out the cervical spine. Okay, so you don't want this to be flat, which is why those hands holding that imaginary golf ball gives you an inch or two more so that your neck can actually be in a curve. It's not flattened, it's a natural cervical curve. Okay, when you come down, the top of the head touches the ground. Again, it's like you're, you're holding your ponytail here maybe. And then you bring yourself in. So do we kick up? 
Never, never, never. Maybe this is where you stay. You come up onto the tippy toe and you hold here and then you rest. Maybe that's the first variation. The second variation will be to pull one knee into the chest and then maybe both knees into the chest with the knees bent and you're low to the ground so your center of gravity is low. And then you come down and you rest, taking pressure off of your head. Some of us get into this, pull the knees into the chest and then straighten the legs up from there. That eventually will be one way to come into your headstand. So by pulling the knees into the chest, curling into a ball, and then sprouting your seed. So you curl into your little ball, and then there's your little sprout coming up. However, those of you that are working strength will try to do this lift with both feet at the same time. So eventually, your legs pick up off the ground. Maybe you hover, maybe you lower. Maybe you hover, maybe you lower. And then with your legs straight, it's a straight-legged lift up. So really, there's no wobble at my head and neck. This is the hardest way to come into Sheer Shasana A. It is also the most stable. So let's say you're just working and building the symmetry of the legs to just hover on your toe tip. That's stronger of a practice in the long run than even curling the knees into the chest. And of course, you rest and take the weight out of the top of the head by really releasing the forehead. So, those are some of the Shirshasana A review practice techniques. Shirshasana B, a less stable base, a more precarious way to practice headstand. Also, still lovely, still fun if you feel strong and if you feel like you're challenging yourself. So, you check for your equilateral triangle that's equal between the hands and the head or that isosceles triangle, remember your old geometry, right? Where the hands are equal distant and the head is forward. So it's not quite all three points the same distance away from each other. The head has a longer point away from it. For me, that's where it is. I'm not all equal. But you can have a blanket on this one, which I love. Your elbows don't pull out. They pull in like a chaturanga. So is chaturanga a good prep for this? Absolutely. Remember the knees curling in variation? Well, you have shelves here. So you can use the shelf of your arm in this variation. It's kind of nice to do that. But of course, eventually you come up onto your toe tips and you pike into your sheer shasana B from the strength of the spine without any wobble on your head, your neck, maybe even as little wobble at the pelvis. And you'll take a few breaths with the eyes soft, elbows squeezing toward each other, triceps wrapping up, shoulders away from the ears, and then you bring yourself down, again releasing into a child's pose to take that pressure off of your head. Giving yourself the time to recover, the time to absorb, the practice, the strength, the pressure, and all of that work at the neck until you can safely bring yourself up. So this is just one review. I hope you enjoy and have fun practicing a safe headstand. Namaste.